In the most complex, powerful, and beautiful places, we find simplicity. Not simple things, but something elemental and truthful at the most basic level. Barnett's life and work emanated from this beautiful and powerful place. For the most exceptional people, success in a lifetime is often measured by the question, did they change the world? Even this question is not enough to capture Barnett's legacy as an educator, researcher, thought leader, and paradigm breaker. His legacy is more powerful than that. Barnett taught us all how to remake the world into something that reflects our higher selves and our truest aspirations. He would want nothing more from all of us than to continue to do this for others. So am I just a body? Clearly not. Not just. So what else am I? A spirit? An energy field? Something else? So these are some of the small questions that I'm pondering. And at the same time, I'm deeply grateful for the day, for the hope of tomorrow, for Kim, for a family who loves me far more than I deserve, for good friends, for the beauty of this day, and so much more. Big hugs to all. I met Barnett in 1978, and the way I look at it, Barnett Pierce forever changed the face of communication studies for me personally and for so many of our colleagues. But he also forced the discipline as a whole to re-examine its directions, both in terms of theory and methodology. He didn't do it alone, of course. That was not Barnett's style. He was collaborative to his core, and he worked best when he was engaged in what he perceived to be a single turn in a multi-turn process. My name is Arthur Jensen, and I take a communication perspective. Eisenhower was almost as profound as my mother whose moral compass, and much else in her life, centered around the joy she found in babies. After she surprised me with her opinion about a controversial issue, she explained that what's good for babies is good. What's not is not. If we were to start from that premise, and if we were to include Afghan and Pakistani babies as having the same importance as American babies, I wonder what sort of international efforts we would be engaged in, and whether they would include so many guns, warships, and rockets. Thanks, Mom. Gratitude for this day, for the hope of another, for being able to call myself beloved and to love those who love me, for the beauty of the world and the taste of good food and the smell of flowers, for kindness of strangers and for hugs, virtual and otherwise, from friends, for the hope of being forgiven for all the times I've acted stupidly, or meanly, or hurtfully, for the pleasures of movement. As I write, I'm remembering the joy I had yesterday, hitting a tennis ball with my friend and coach, JT. Speaking of miracles, East Beach in Santa Barbara is south facing, so in winter you can watch the sun rise out of the ocean and set into the ocean with frolicking dolphins and moored sailboats in between. I went to the beach in full dark and found a deserted lifeguard tower 
where I could sit and meditate. I was aware that my thoughts were dark, concern about my health, worry about commitments unmet, frustrations at goals unachieved. I was doing well not being in these concerns, worries, and frustrations, but I was noticing them. Then, the leading edge of the sun peeked over the ridge line of the headland. It was a brilliant orange dot, and then the sun expanded to a crescent, exploding light, revealing wisps of fog on the water and creating a million diamonds as it hit the tops of the waves. And then the full sun hurled itself into the sky, awakening the birds, pelicans and sandpipers and seagulls, and chasing away the fog and the darkness. And I laughed, a full head back belly laugh. I am at home in the universe with miracles and horizons. Moments of grace are all around us. We author our own experiences. I was very conscious of my wobbly knees, leg muscles that seemed about to give out when we met a family coming the other way. The little boy was outspokenly friendly. Are you enjoying your walk? We asked them how far we had to go and were disappointed to hear, about two more miles. Then the most wonderful thing happened, the silent forest was filled with beautiful music. The man in the family we passed had taken a wooden flute from his backpack and was playing Andean music. For several minutes, we could hear this beautiful music. My heart soared, my feet felt 10 pounds lighter, and my head was easier to hold up. I am so grateful for this unexpected moment of grace. I met Banit in 2002 in Denmark. I have truly been blessed and very fortunate to have met you. Your words, your wisdom, and your kindness. My name is Hannah, and I take a communication perspective. Sometime in the middle of the night, I gave myself a stern talking to. Who is this I? And who is this me who resents being talked to that way? To put it bluntly, why are you, me, stuck on the mystery novel version of uncertainty? Why can't you, after spending all that time pounding away at keyboards and detached from real life so that you could read and think, Deal with it in the other way of understanding mystery. Where is your delight and celebration at the uncertainty of it all? Hi, most of you know me, I'm Vernon Cronin. Barnett and I started working on this CMM thing together in 1974. And the bit of reminiscence that I want to share with you had to do with a tour we took. Right after our 1980 book was published, we went from workshop to workshop, university to university, it was a European dimension, and we were exhausted with still a stop to go and walking through an airport somewhere when Barnett began to chant a, para a paraphrase of an old chant from those days. 
free the Amherst too. Free the Amherst too. People walking by thought we were nuts. I just cracked up. Barnett in 1988 in the Department of Communication at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Barnett always found a way to challenge my intellectual conceit and to advance my thinking, whether it was through CMN or working other areas. Barnett is the key person who shaped my intellectual terrain and professional journey. My name is Victoria and I take a communication perspective. I met Barnett in 1979. Thank you, Barnett, for the symphonies you created and conducted, for bringing us together to play them with you, and for inspiring us to play on. My name is Jonathan Shaler, and I take a communication perspective. Theorist. I pluck words right out of the air and kill them like bugs impaled in a specimen case. I arrange them in long, straight lines for other people to read and critique and misunderstand. But words live on in speech and in silence. Professor Pierce, this word is not in the dictionary. That's all right. Wait 20 years and it will be. Professor Pierce, I'm confused. Congratulations. That puts you in the top 10% of this class. Professor Pierce, I'm confused. Good, you should be confused because what you are learning is at a radical tangent to what you've been taught all your life. Let's explore what benefits there might be in your confusion. There's a bit of muddy wisdom in that. Hmm, I like the concept of muddy wisdom. How can we not be filled with wonder? How can we not let our spirits soar and commit ourselves to personal and social evolution, not knowing where any of this will take us, but entrusted by the prospect of playing as well as we can, the role that we have during the moments we have in the continuing creation of the universe? Big hugs.